Welcome back to Expresso here on SABC3, your feel-good breakfast show indeed. Now, they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but what if death came back to try again? Our literary guest this morning, Lauren Bukas, is the award-winning author of the acclaimed novels Moxieland and Zoo City. She's done everything from comics to screenplays to children's animation and, of course, full-length novels. And she's here this morning with her latest offering, The Shining Girls, a masterful tale on the classic serial killer tale, of course, a masterful twist. It's time for us to take a look at The Shining Girls. He gave it to me when I was a little girl. You shine. I need you. He said it was to remember him by. He didn't mean me, obviously. The dead don't remember anything. Shh. It's all right. The house wants more. It wants to claim the fire in their eyes and snuff it out. Girls get murdered all the time. It could be a father and son team. He might be 90 years old now. He might be dead. I'll find her. Keep my promise. No, this is not a trailer to a movie. It is just a taste, a visual taste of what you will experience when you read The Shining Goals by the author, Lauren Bukas. Good morning, Lauren. Good to have you on Expresso. Thanks so much, Leanne. Well, I must say, you have given me quite an eventful few days. But before <laughs> we talk about this, The Shining Goals has been described as the time traveler's wife meets the girl with a dragon tattoo. Now, for anybody who has not yet read this book, do you mm -hmm. want to give us a little bit of a taster on what we'll experience when we do? Absolutely. It's um, separate between 1930s and 1990s, it's about a time-traveling serial killer wow. who finds a house that opens onto other times. Mm -hmm. And everything is going just absolutely perfectly. He's finding these shining girls, some young woman with burning potential that he stalks across their lives. Yeah. And no one can trace him and no one can find him. He's unstoppable until one of his victims survives. And that's Kirby Mizrachi in the 1990s, and she's a feisty young journalist, and she turns the hunt around. Wow. Now, I must tell you, I, I spent the last few days reading this, and, and you have something incredibly special here. Not only do you have an utterly original story with big ideas, but completely believable, a beautifully written novel. Um, I, I was just telling you before the break that this story, you almost wait to catch you out. Like, I want to <laughs> catch the author out. Like, when is this not going to make sense? When am I going to say, you didn't get that right? But you absolutely do. How is it that this vision for the book came to life and, and for it to still make sense? I mean, we're talking about time travel. We're talking about a serial killer that is is unstoppable. Where did it come from? You know, the idea just popped into my head while I was messing around on Twitter. Um, so, but, you know, I knew that I could do something really, really interesting with yeah. it. And this is actually a picture of my murder wall, uh, which is how I tracked wow. the different killings across time. And I had three different timelines, the yeah. killer's timeline, the novel's timeline, and the actual historical timeline. Yeah. And I know it looks like I'm a crazy person, um, but that's kind of the inside of my head. But that's what makes the book work. That's yeah. really what it does. And, and why I said it was beautifully written is you, you take us through such a journey. Everything makes sense. Like when he's jumping to different decades and he's, you know, meeting his victims and he's basically setting them up for when he'll come back for them later on in the story. Um, what I wanted to know from you is how long does it take to put this all together? Because there's so much detail to the book. There is a lot of detail. The whole process took about a year. I did a mm. research trip to Chicago, um, yeah. which is where the book is set. Um, it was a city I'd lived in for a while, and it has a lot of resonances with South Africa, a lot of corruption, a yeah. lot of crime, um, but also kind of a, you know, a brilliant and interesting city. Yeah. Um, and then I would research things along the way. I, I worked with two young researchers who were just absolutely amazing. They would find me fascinating things. Like in the book, there is a girl who dances in radium paint. Yes. Yes. And um, w which, of course, is radioactive. So she dances in the mm -hmm. 1930s in radioactive paint. And that was based on a real young woman who was yeah. a burlesque dancer in 1936, yeah. which one of my researchers turned up for me. And it was just, you know what's amazing is that the real world is often more inventive mm -hmm. and interesting than anything you could make up. Yeah. And yeah. to be able to bring in those threads of history and to play with what history says about where we are right now mm -hmm. and how the 20th century has shaped us was amazing. It was really fun to do. I must say this book is absolutely fascinating. And Dion Mayer says of it, he says it's enthralling, it's dazzlingly inventive, it's superbly executed, and it's a huge accomplishment, which is absolutely amazing. Now, this book is going to be available in 21 countries around the world. That's right. South African 
audiences can already go and get their copy, and I suggest that you do. <laughs> it's, 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 it's absolutely amazing. I was kept up till about one o'clock every morning, and when I went to sleep, I literally couldn't because it scared the living daylights <laughs> out of me. I've never been creeped out so much by a book, and I could not put it down. What are you hoping that people, what is the central theme in this book that you're hoping that people will take away from it? It's really about violence against women yeah. um, and how we see women, one, you know, murder victims as just bodies, yeah. whereas they were people. Yeah. Um, and it's really getting at the heart of who these women were before Harper kills them. And I'll spend yeah. a whole chapter talking about their lives and their dreams and ambitions. And I could have written a whole novel about any yeah. of them, yeah. from Zora, who's a welder during World War II, through to um, Alice Templeton, who's a burlesque dancer in the 1940s, or mm. Willie Rose, who's an architect under, under McCarthyism and the yeah. commie scare in yeah. America. Well, I see so many books. Can, it can be like Twilight. So many different books can come from just this one because each storyline is so strong and so um, moving. There were two particular, and I don't want to give it away, but there were two particular stories that I, I sat in my bed um, on Saturday night and I literally, the book dropped, and I bawled my eyes out. And I'm like, Lauren, how could you do that to her? You know, how could you make that happen? And that's what I think we want. We want to be taken on that journey. We want to laugh. We want to cry. And when we're done, we want to be left just spent. Yeah. Because you've, you've given us probably the best adventure of our lives. So thank you very, very much well, for that. That was you. absolutely incredible. So where can readers get hold of your book? It's available in all good bookstores. The e-book is out now, yeah. uh, not on Amazon, but from local, local suppliers. Uh, the e-book is only 82 Rand. The okay. paperback is 180. And there's a limited edition hardcover. There are only 1,000 of them in the country, and it's just absolutely beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Question is, what does a writer do after delivering a masterpiece like this? <laughs> what happens next? You feel terrible pressure to write something else that's even yeah. better. I have, to, I have to deliver my next book by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, and, but you know what? It's, I'm, I get paid to write mm. stuff. I get paid to make stuff up. It's an incredible privilege to be able to be a yeah. storyteller for a living. It is. It is an incredible privilege. And for anybody, I wish that when I was in varsity and I was in my third year or in honors, we got this book because we would have been given this and we would have said deconstructed to you know, t till you can't anymore. There's just so much. So university students in particular are going to love this. There's lots and lots to write about. But Lauren Beekes, thank you so much for joining us on Expresso. Thank you so much for an amazing read. You have to go and get The Shining Girls. It is probably one of the most entertaining books I've read in a long time. Thank, thank you for you so being much. here. Thank and you. well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is time for us to spice up our lives in the kitchen with Ewan and Chef Michael.